Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to create a mobile touch joystick controller in GDevelop. Okay, so as always I'll show you uh, the example project which you can download from my each.io page. And this is very simple, we can control the direction of our um, spaceship by just changing the angle here. Uh, or we can also uh, change the speed of our uh, spaceship by just dragging away from the center this small circle, right? So the further you go away, the faster our spaceship will fly. And just for ease of uh, understanding, I included here all the values. So you'll see we'll change how we change the angle and the speed by just using this circle. Uh, so this works pretty pretty well. Uh, it's not easy to make. Uh, I spent some time to understand how this works. But at the end of the day, it works and hopefully you will be able to use something like this in your own projects. So here we go. This is uh, a new project. Uh, I have some assets here already imported. And uh, the first thing you're going to do here is to create some scene uh, variables, right? So we just uh, right click here, scene properties and edit scene variables. Uh, these ones will help us to control a few things uh, of our ship. So we'll add uh, the first one. And the first one I'm going to add is a variable uh, which will control the angle of uh, our spaceship. So I'll just call it uh, controller angle. Another one we'll need is to control the speed. So let's say controller speed. And we'll need the last one uh, which uh, we call touch in out so this will help us to understand uh, whether uh, we are uh, touching or clicking outside of our controller or inside and this will be very useful uh, at the end okay and i leave a zero here so we will have some initial value here okay so let's uh, hit apply and uh, the next thing we're going to do i'll just import a few assets here um, i want to create uh, two layers two additional layers so one layer is gonna be uh, background and I put it under base layer and another one it's gonna be UI okay uh, so let's just put a background here uh, okay and I uh, just send it to my background layer and the next thing I'm going to do uh, I think the good way to start now is to create the joystick and all the logic on how it works and then we add ship at the end so uh, first thing i'm going to add here is controller center so this is this object is going to be invisible at the end but it's very useful to understand where is the center of our controller and i made this uh, little sprite here with the line um, i mean you can draw whatever you want but this is just purely for me to understand in which direction we are facing uh, at the moment when we'll be going to drag this uh, controller so i'll just do something like this and I'll add a controller position so this is going to be actual um, object that we will move around to move our ship okay uh, so both of these objects I would just uh, send them to UI layer uh, also I want to add it to text objects uh, so we can actually display on screen uh, the angle the current angle and speed okay so I'll just put here just a simple text object and this one here okay and these ones as well I'll just send them to UI layer cool uh, so uh, next thing uh, we'll just go to our events and start to put some uh, actions and conditions and events here a few things we need to set up at the beginning of the scene so at the beginning of the scene uh, I want to create a, um, this object, touch radi radius, so this is, is going to be the limit of our uh, touch button. Uh, I want to create it right in the middle of this uh, controller center. So I'll just say touch radius, <coughs> create at position of our controller center X and controller center Y. Okay. And I want it to be also a little bit transparent. So touch radius, opacity, and I put something like maybe 35. It's gonna work. 
okay uh, also I want to uh, center my controller position at the beginning of this scene so I want it to be right in the middle uh, at the beginning at least so then I will just say controller position uh, equals to controller center X controller center Y and you know you can also you could have created this object just in the on that position just the same way we did with this so uh, there is going to be another object we want to create so I have it here in the scene it's just this little uh, box here it's a little red square and this uh, uh, square as the name suggests is mouse distance uh, controller so this is going to calculate a distance of our mouse from the center of our controller center and i'll show you why i'm not using the actual mouse position and this uh, but just this just this object's position uh, you will you will see it later uh, so i'm going to create this object as well so create an object and uh, position is mouse x and mouse y okay so now if we run this in what we have here uh, we have created this at the position of our mouse we created this radius object at the, uh, uh, this controller center and we moved our um, position of our touch controller to the center as well so now it's a little bit you know random distance uh, between the bottom and the left of the screen I just can uh, maybe move this a little bit to the right somewhere here so just it looks a little bit uh, you know balanced okay so that's cool so next thing we're gonna do uh, we need to add some conditions which will uh, happen always okay so the first thing we're gonna add is uh, we want this object red square uh, to move always with our mouse so I'll just say mouse distance position of an object equals to mouse x and same thing is here but mouse y okay another thing we want to do is to take this controller center and um, you know rotate it always uh, to the direction of our mouse so rotate towards this one so rotate towards the position and say mouse x and mouse y we can leave zero here and so what this will do you see now we, and when we move our mouse uh, this central controller thing is always rotating towards our position and we also have this uh, red square following our mouse as well okay so that's that's a good start so next thing we're gonna do is uh, we'll start to do something when we actually uh, touch the screen uh, and or click with our mouse so let's go just to this one so mouse button pressed touch held and I'll say left button okay and what will happen then uh, at that moment we'll just move our uh, controller position to uh, position of our mouse okay x equals to mouse y so now what will happen is you know our controller moves whenever we click to uh, position of our mouse and if we hold the left button it will stay there so we kind of drag in this object around okay so that works uh, so now the, the, the first problem, right? So uh, we can actually move outside of this circle. So we kind of need to limit the radius uh, where we can move this uh, object, right? So uh, so I'll show you how to do this. Uh, so we just create a new sub condition, and we say if the distance 
between two objects uh, is 100 pixels and 100 pixels is because the radius of my um, uh, you know of that big circle is uh, uh, 100 pixels and we invert this condition so whenever uh, the distance is greater than 100 pixels between this object and this uh, object as well then uh, we can say that position of our controller position object we put it around another object which is the center and the distance will be 100 uh, pixels and which angle uh, we just pick our controller center dot angle so you know you remember that our center object is always moving towards our mouse so then this will move as well within that range range of 100 pixels so here you go the first problem solved uh, i think that's cool and uh, another thing we're gonna do here is uh, and we leave here empty that means it will happen always we will register the uh, angle of this object uh, so you remember we created a variable so let's say uh, what if a scene variable controller angle is always equal to our uh, controller center object angle okay and uh, you know now we can add uh, we can modify uh, text of this one so we can actually see how much angle uh, we are rotating at the moment uh, so we can say always so we have this always condition here and I can say um, angle display change text and it will equal to angle so this text will be always there plus uh, variable and the variable is controller angle so now if we hit play so now angle is zero because you know we we're, uh, this um, main object is not rotating doing nothing but now we can drag this around and actually see uh, which angle it is it's it's a big number because it uh, you know we uh, we are not rounding it up but uh, we can round it up uh, it's easy uh, we can just go here uh, and add here uh, large number to string round and just add the closing here and just remove string and that should work okay so this way we'll just uh, round that number up and if I hit play we just see the actual degrees right so it's starts from zero goes up and then goes to minus you know and this this just works now so we know the angle of uh, our um, our controller here okay uh, another thing we can actually calculate at the moment as well is uh, the speed so in here uh, where it says always we can actually uh, modify the var variable of uh, our scene uh, controller speed and it always equals to the distance between two objects so we just click this button again and say distance between two objects and the object A is gonna be controller center and the object B is gonna be controller position okay and then uh, once we reg registered this uh, variable we can display it as text uh, same way we did it here so we can just go to speed text uh, modify text and it equals to speed. Uh, so this this is the label. The text will be always here. Plus uh, large number to string round uh, variable of a scene variable controller speed. Okay. So this will give us a nice round number of our speed. So the speed limit is going to be 100. So we have these values. 
and it's very very cool now because now we can use all of these values all of these things to actually move our spaceship so let's add our spaceship here somewhere in the scene and now that we know uh, these two values so con uh, controller angle and controller speed we can use them to move our ship and here it says always we will just add some force to our uh, to our ship and we will choose at a force uh, angle okay so uh, which angle well it's variable scene variable controller angle okay and what is the speed it's still variable uh, controller speed okay with that instant force press ok now if you run the scene our ship starts to move it doesn't rotate anywhere but at least it moves to the correct position you see so it follows the instructions that our virtual joystick gives us now if I leave it here obviously it will just fly uh, over and over again if I leave it here to fly there I just released my key so there, there are many things we can fix now and I think it flies a little bit slow so we can actually increase the speed by keeping still you know this uh, 0 to 100 speed uh, limit but we can just increase the speed uh, here so what is the speed so variable controller speed so when it's 100 or whatever number we can actually multiply it by some number so I'll just add um, multiply by 4 okay so now if I run it will fly faster you see and you can play around with those numbers okay that's cool so next thing we want to do is actually to rotate our um, our ship as well so just the same thing we did here uh, I'll add a new action and say ship rotate rotate towards an angle and uh, the angle is variable controller angle but you know I don't want it to rotate immediately because otherwise it will just jump from one angle to another and so I'll just add a little bit of delay here so 600 I think it's gonna work nicely so let's see let's see if that works so now we can actually rotate and if I press here you see it will not rotate immediately but it will just you know fly from one uh, side to another and and rotate with uh, within that small six, 600 milliseconds okay so that's cool now the issue is there, there are a few issues actually here so the issue is that if, when I release uh, my touch or my uh, mouse we leave it there and my ship flies continuously I want this to you know go back to the center position whenever I release it uh, just how a um, like physical joystick would do okay uh, so to do that uh, but to not do it like immediately you know because if I release and it just goes to the center immediately our ship will stop immediately as well uh, I want to delay that a little bit so in order to do that I'll just use twin so I'll go to behavior other behavior and I say twin okay there is a nice tutorial about uh, how to use twin if you want to watch this uh, apply so and then what I'm going to do here uh, is uh, I'll add another uh, condition here and I will say mouse uh, touch is released so when we release the mouse or we release the touch uh, I re uh, register first of all my current position so position equals to uh, position of the same object so controller position X and equals to controller position Y okay and then I just twin uh, from that position to the center of this object my controller okay so then I choose my controller and twin uh, object position twin identifier I'll just uh, call it uh, back to center uh, and then uh, I say is 
controller center x um, controller center y uh, easing uh, I'll just uh, you know uh, it's gonna be fast at the beginning and slow at the end so I can use is out quote this one and duration I think 600, uh, 700 uh, milliseconds is gonna be fine oops I didn't close this okay so press ok and then let's see what happens so I release the key it will just go back to the center with a really nice smooth movement which will actually slow down our ship as well so it doesn't stop immediately okay so that's cool that works uh, actually what I'm going to do now I'll just hide these uh, two objects uh, so the center and, and the mouse I, uh, I mean we don't need them anymore we don't need to see them anymore so I'll just say at the beginning of the scene hide this okay and I'll just hide this as well so it looks a little bit cleaner now okay and you know it feels like everything is done but what happens now is if I touch out of my um, controller it will still do the thing right so imagine you have other UI elements you don't really want to mess around with this you want to make sure that if you drag to the limit uh, this um, controller it will still fly you know it will not stop but whenever you release it and touch again outside it shouldn't work right so you need to go back to this uh, controller so uh, we'll use a touch in out variable that we created at the beginning uh, in order to do that so um, we're gonna play a little, a little bit around with the variables and the limit uh, things you can do uh, so first of all I want to create a new event here and I call a uh, variable well, if I see variable touch in out equals to let's choose a number so I'll choose number two okay and I put it here when it says touch left mouse and this whole section I'll just put it under this uh, variable so this is good those are gonna be uh, uh, sub variables of this so only when touch in out uh, equals to two then we can actually do all of these things and move our controller and our ship okay um, so next thing I'm gonna add here is we will check if the mouse is uh, on top of our touch radius so uh, we'll just choose this and say mouse is on this object okay and if it's on top of it uh, we'll change our variable touch in out uh, we'll make it equal to zero okay and we create uh, a few sub conditions to this so so if uh, mouse button press or touch held left then we change this variable uh, what if I see variable touch in out equals to 2 so whenever we inside this uh, radius and whatever we do touch or release we still allow to move our ship right so I'll just copy and paste this and change this to button release to left it will still go to 2 right because we are inside the radius of our controller but now we need to create some exceptions as well uh, so I create a new event and we'll say uh, gonna check if we are outside of this radius so mouse is not on this object so it's outside and if uh, that happens and at the same time our variable of a scene variable touch in and out equals to 2 and we create another subcondition and and mouse is released left so then we change If a scene variable control touch in and out, we change it to one. So basically, what this means: so if our touch or mouse uh, is outside of uh, our controller radius, and at the moment uh, the touch in out is actually equals to two, so we allow to move our uh, object, and then we release the mouse, 
uh, then we'll go back to touch in out one so then next time if you press the same space I'll, uh, it's better that I'm show you so if we move our ship it's all fine within the radius it still moves if I go with my mouse outside of the range right uh, outside of this radius but then I release and I click we cannot move it anymore unless we go back here so this problem is now solved so that's that's very cool and the next thing uh, I, I am going to add here it's a little bit of nice uh, you know visual effects here so I want to add some fuel to our ship and see uh, how it works and I will show you the exactly uh, exact places when we can can actually add this uh, so so first of all I'll just add a little glow here okay so that's gonna be some light here and I actually want to you know for, for the moment it's just a, like you know white glow there so I want to change some colors here so I'll just say at the beginning of the scene uh, we change the color global color we'll choose something like very very blue okay and I also want to change the blend mode so that we have some you know transparency there uh, glow blend mode equals to one I think add blend mode will work very well so now it will look more like a blue uh, energy light okay that's cool it looks nice um, and I want to make it smaller at the beginning so I want this light to be you know bigger when we move and smaller when we don't move so I'll just uh, choose my glow and search for scale equal to 0 0.5 so we'll make it uh, smaller uh, so next thing I want to move this glow with my ship and in order to do that I just add a new point here so I'll call it fuel and the position is gonna be 8 something like that 848 so right here when the hole is okay close and I say always here uh, glow position it's gonna be always equal to ship that point X and the point is fuel and same thing for the Y axis ship point Y okay so now if we press play it's always there okay but as I said, I want to make it bigger when, when we fly, so uh, our ship is moving, then I'll say uh, glow, scale, it's now 1.5. But when we stop, so when the left mouse button is released, then we set up glow, scale, back to 0 0.5. So now if I run it, see the glow is bigger and if I release it's smaller. So this happens without any transition, without any twin, but that's okay because we'll have also some particle effect there and it will mask this uh, pretty well, okay? So uh, yeah, let's go back to particles. I have already created a particle effect here. Um, if you want to see how it is done, just, uh, you know, uh, just go here inside and you see all the settings or you can actually watch some tutorial about uh, particles here as well uh, but mine is already here ready to use to be used uh, so let's go to events and uh, obviously we also need to um, attach this uh, particle effect to our ship uh, exactly in that fuel position so we'll say position of an object equals to uh, ship uh, dot point x fuel okay and just copy and paste it here and change x to y so that's one so now if we run this it's there you know it if you move it's already creating this like nice trail behind uh, but I always, uh, but I also wanted to, you know, to kind of disappear when you stop and when you uh, go again, you know, uh, we have some trail there. 
So um, we will need to add a new condition here under uh, our mouse touch is down and let's say trigger once so when this all happens we also create an object so fill create at uh, position of um, ship point x fuel and ship point y fuel and also want to make sure that uh, the order is set up correctly because uh, it should be on top of our ship so first of all i want to actually oops sorry i want to check what is the, the order of this one so it's 10 so anything about 10 will go uh, well so we'll say fuel the order equals to i don't know let's 20. Okay, so whenever we press uh, touch and everything is fine and our ship is flying, we will create this uh, particle object here. But when uh, our left mouse is released, we can reduce uh, the capacity of the fuel. So capacity equals to zero and uh, fuel flow equals to zero. Okay, so it will all disappear immediately. Okay, so let's test this out and see if it works. So here you go. I think that works pretty well. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, our ship flying. Uh, it has some fuel behind uh, with nice particles with some light there. Uh, the touch is working correctly. And, uh, you know, just before uh, finishing this tutorial, uh, I actually want to try this on my phone and see if that actually works well, okay? So I'll just export my game to Android, okay? And package for Android and I'll show you on my device if that works. So as you can see, it works very well on the mobile device and uh, I think that was it. And, uh, you know, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, uh, join my Discord server, follow me on Twitter, and see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.